chased the drops round and round, licking hard and trying to avoid the icy centre. Looking up, he waved to his parents, who had found a space on the crowded beach for their parasol, then sucked and caught a dollop of not too cold creamy liquid with his tongue. Delicious. Suddenly, he heard a growly voice. Hello, Danny. Where are you, Roger? I can't see you. That's because I'm invisible. If you stand beside me, you will see me, and you will become invisible too. I don't want to be invisible. My parents will wonder where I am. Just for one second, feeble Roger. All right, then. Danny gave an extra large lick and almost had his teeth in the cold, but the dripping stopped, leaving a round, cream-colored barge wedged inside the cold. Moving towards the voice, Danny bumped against a hard, bony wings. How do you avoid knocking into people who can't see us? That's the fun of being invisible. No one can knock into us. We just walk through them. Not for too long. I want to be visible and real as soon as possible. What do you want, Roger? Roger pointed to the kiosk selling sandwiches, sausages, and cold drinks. Do you see those five men with sun hats eating hot dogs? They are planning to steal jewels from shops in London at a place called Hatton Garden. I want you to help me stop them. How can I do that? By coming with me to the robbery and telephoning the police before the thieves pile into their getaway van with the jewels. I shall give you a magic SIM card for your mobile so the police can't trace your number. Policemen are far too stuck to believe in dragons or magic or being a Couldn't you change your voice, telephone the police yourself and leave me out of it? Roger coughed. I could do all sorts of things, but not dialing numbers with my claws or holding a telephone to my ear and talking into it. Danny licked his coat while he was thinking. Well, what about it? asked Roger, turning his head to one side. Oh, for one thing, how do we get there? Patton Garden is in London, and London is over a hundred miles away. Yes, and when? No problem. The robbery is planned for Wednesday evening. We shall fly there. You'll be safer on my back than in an airplane. And what shall I say to my parents? They don't know you exist. Danny, when you're invisible, time sort of stops. It starts when you become visible again. Roger lowered his voice to an excited whisper. On Wednesday night, I shall come into your room and we'll fly to London. I promise not to worry your parents. Danny nodded slowly. Roger gave a dragon chuckle, which sounds like a miniature volcano exploding. See you on Wednesday. Don't forget. And then, push, he disappeared. Danny's mother waved from the sunbathing space. Danny waved back, edged his way through the crowd, and took a light lick of the diminishing dog to make the ice cream last as long as possible. He sat down on a towel to eat the cold stuff before wading into the sea, where he mulled over his next adventure with Roger. By Wednesday, Danny had decided he wasn't going to London. If Roger could make himself invisible, he could find another way of letting the police know about the robbery. Danny went to bed with a book about pirates and pieces of eight and put the coins that Roger's mother had given him under his pillow. He was dropping off to sleep when his room was filled with a greenish light. Roger was much bigger than Danny's bedroom, but as he was almost invisible, it didn't matter. Put on some warm clothes, Danny. It will be chilly in the sky. I'm not coming. But you said you would. I only nodded. Why can't you work your magic on your own? I told you I can't. Roger seemed to scratch his head. Come on, it'll be fun. We'll be dual detectives and no one will know. Danny frowned, laid his book on his bedside table, and put on jeans, a warm jersey, and thick socks before slipping his feet into his trainers and fastening his sticky straps. Roger streamed through the window in a trail of green light, and Danny followed him, jumping onto the ground. Now quickly, onto my back. 
You can clutch the bony parts where my wings meet my crest, and you don't need to stretch out your legs as wide as you want. It's more comfortable than riding a horse. How do you know? Have you ever ridden a horse? No, but it's well known that dragon riding is easy. I hope so. Danny sighed and mounted. Rodder was right. Danny's legs slotted into place without effort, and it was easy to catch hold of the bones. It was another push. For a moment, Danny wondered whether he had left his tummy behind. But there it was, being massaged by a warm dragon's back stretched out in full flight. Danny didn't dare look down. He closed his eyes. And they sailed under the star through the wind brushing his face and tousling his hair. Hold tight, coming down now. This is the tricky part. Danny screwed his eyes tight shut and hoped that Rodder would land without a bump. The free fall was scary, but it ended with a light bounce followed by stillness. Get down, whispered Rodder. You will find the magic sim card in your pocket. Change it now and dial 999 when I tell you. Danny caught sight of a van at the end of the street and heard the rustle of people carrying bags, dumping them on the floor behind the open doors and then scurrying back for more. Now, remember you're invisible and you will only be heard by the constable taking your call. Tell the police there are jewel thieves in Hatton Garden and they have ten minutes to catch them. Danny did exactly that, and soon there were blue lights flashing and policemen chasing robbers and making arrests. Stay here for one minute, said Robert. You will still be invisible. What are you doing? Danny felt the warm dragon flank surge away from him. He had never felt so much alone. But only for half a second, Robert returned. Climb up again. I'm taking you home. Danny fell asleep on the return journey and woke up when Rodder flew into his bedroom through the open window, which should have been just big enough for Danny. But as they were invisible, and Danny supposed of no size at all, there was no problem. Good night, Danny. Thank you for coming. Put the other SIM card back in your boat. Rodder was a quarter of his size, so he could fit into Danny's room. Danny changed the cards and handed the magic one to Rodder, who put it in a bulging pouch under his wing. Then a cloud of green bubbles floated through the window and disappeared into the night. Danny fell onto his bed, only to wake up with the uncomfortable feeling you have when you sleep in your clothes. It was still dark. He changed into his pajamas, climbed into bed, and dreamed about flying under the stars in a dragon's back. Over a late breakfast, Danny listened to the news. Last night, police caught five thieves who had broken into the vaults of jewelers' shops in Hatton Garden. An anonymous caller alerted them. Nearly all the jewelry, worth several millions, has been recovered. Although some gold rings and diamonds worth ten thousand pounds are still missing. told his mother that he was going for a walk up the hillside. Be careful, Danny. Don't speak to strangers, said his mother as he ran out of the house. At the top of the hill, the cave was, of course, invisible. Danny stumped with rage and shouted, Rogger, I'm never, never going to speak to you again. What's wrong? asked a kindly, growly voice. Rogger tricked me. He used me to steal the jewels. Danny's eyes were streaming with tears as he looked up into Robert's mother's face. They will be returned, she replied, and disappeared into the rock. That evening, Danny was relieved to hear the news. The latest development in the jewelry Wait, robbery in Hatton Garden is that all the jewels have now been recovered after the police had initially reported that ten thousand pounds worth of gold rings and diamonds were missing. Just listen, there's only 10 seconds left. 